Hi everyone, it's Anne. I'm going to show you today how to do a color uh, trace and convert it to Inkscape. And I'm using my favorite Disney character, Daisy Duck. I've already uh, did a copy and paste and brought her in. And I'm going to increase the size of my canvas area by holding down the control key and scrolling with the wheel of my mouse. And so let's see, I think that's big enough. So I'm going to just highlight Daisy. I'll go to Path, Trace Bitmap, Uncheck Smooth, Uncheck Scans. I don't think I have a background, but we'll just collect it. Click it and I'll select Live Preview. The objective when you're tracing is to make sure that you have a clear outline and uh, there should not be anything that is black uh, in this preview window that's not black on the original so the only thing black we have are her eyes that's the only thing black here the threshold defaults to 45 and it says that at that um threshold the trace should be fine without having any broken lines so let's click ok and find out now have the color original on the left the trace on the right the first thing that i see is that there is going to be a broken line so I hold the control key and zoom in scroll up and show you and that's this area right here and this area right here and looks like this area right here if I end here and her bow is the lines are not uh, connecting and looks like here it's not connecting so the 45 did not work here so we're going to have to increase that threshold there's a little um, trick that you can do but I'm not going to show you that until I teach you um, the manual way to uh, to fix it it's always good to know how to do it in case the uh, tips or the trick doesn't work so I'm going to, I still have the color highlighted, so what I'm going to do now is increase this threshold. I do not uh, trace my images using scans. I wasn't taught that way, so I don't use that way. I don't like having extra layers in. So whenever I do my training, I will always work with my threshold. So uh, Daisy is highlighted. 45 was the default. It didn't work. I still have some gaps. So now I'm going to increase this. My magic number is like 52. Everyone will have their own magic number that by the time you get to that, you will have a perfect uh, a trace. So I'll click OK. And let's see. Let's compare here now and see what we have. I will zoom in. This was 45. We had a gap. I don't have a gap. This one had a gap at the default you don't see it there let's see the gap on the bow it's filled in and the gap on her beak right here is now filled in and 52 is the magic number that works for me and that's how I ended up I always um, starting with 52 when I open up a, a document and begin to trace but again you have to determine by your screen's resolution uh, if what what your magic number is going to be so this one works fine we're gonna delete the one with the default threshold I don't need this preview window anymore so I'm gonna X out of it like I said in er in previous uh, tutorials you can leave her in the uh, canvas uh, area, the uh, design uh, box to uh, complete the process of converting her, or you can move it over to the side. I'm going to move it over to uh, the side because as I zoom in, she gets larger than that box anyway. So I never get rid of my original until I have... Uh, completed uh, applying color to my trace so with Daisy highlighted looking all sassy she's my favorite Disney character I need to break her into pieces because I'm going to uh, cut those pieces and layer them on the one back piece um, 
for the background. So I need to go back to path. And this time I'm gonna select break apart. Break it apart into all of the individual pieces for me to cut. Everything turned black on Daisy. That means that I did a good job in the trace. Um, there are no gaps anywhere uh, breaking the lines. And so what I see now are these bounding boxes that are just simply letting me know all of the pieces that I'm going to have to cut and weed. OMG. Oh, wow. Okay, so the next step is I'm just going to click off of her. Bring my little color in here. And so now I'm going to click on all of these pieces that I asked the software to break apart and I will start applying color to them. And the end result is that my trace should look exactly like the original image. Now I can click around in here and try to find where my uh, pieces are that I told it to break apart and I may look up and find what I need. But I always use this uh, uh, Edit Path by Nodes tool because when I move it around, it helps me to see where all of my pieces are and it takes out the uh, guesswork. So let's get started with our bow. I'm going to highlight this part of her bow. And as I move this here, I noticed that the bow, even though I didn't have a break in the line, I noticed that the bow and uh, this part of her hair seems to be um, connected there. So let me just go ahead and click on my dropper tool and let's give it some color and find out. Yep, exactly what I thought. And it's because I missed, zoom in, I missed this little break in the line to separate the bow from her hair. So I'm going to go ahead and finish coloring everything else and I will fix that uh, later. I was so busy looking for the bigger things that I did not see the smaller one. So, but it's not going to uh, deter me. So now I'm just clicking on the other part of her bow. I'm holding the shift key down and I'm clicking the middle section. And I don't think I got it. So let's see here. And it looks like maybe my middle section may be connected. So let's just take a look. Here I was bragging about it. I don't need to come over here and click uh, for the color because I have the color here. And that is exactly what happened. And I, I let's just see if you can spot why it colored it all in pink instead of just this section right here. And so I'm going to increase it. And did you find it yet? Okay, if you didn't find it, this is where it is. Another break in the line. So I'm going to have to fix this area here, and I'm going to have to fix this area uh, here. Uh, if I get any more, I probably will just start over with the trace again, but it's good that I have this so that you can see what's going on. My Magic 52 did not work. Maybe I should have gone 56, and it would have gone ahead and, and closed these in. So let's just bring this back down to a better view. And let's see, a little bit better view here, and slide this over. And let me go back over here to my note tool and see if if my luck is going to get better here somewhere. I sure hope so. And I'm holding the shift key down and clicking there, trying to get that piece and see if I can get here. And I'm just going to click white. Okay, so far so good. And uh, let's see, I think that other little part there. Over her leg. And uh, let's see, it looks like here, this area, and let's get the rest of her hand. I'm going to hold the shift key down and try to grab that other finger. So I have it, uh, I have the neck. So now we'll get the beak, and to get the exact color, I'm just going to come over here and click there. Hold the shift key down. Let's 
Okay. And what I do when I have areas that I'm going to need to remove later on, just so that I don't forget them, I will uh, give them a really crazy color just to call my attention to it later on. And so I'm going to need to remove this area here so that when I put her on a shirt, it's not going to be a white uh, piece of HTV uh, is actually going to be cut out. And so I'm going to click here. This is the other area that needs to be cut out. So I have those two with a, with a crazy color. So let's see. Now let me grab her other finger. Shoes are the same color. So I click one, hold the shift key down, click in the other. And now I'm going to do this little piece in here. And that's what I'm clicking. Back to my dropper. And it looks like it's the same color as the bow. And now I've got to get these two pieces here. I'm going back to my select tool so I can select these other pieces. And again, I'm clicking one piece, holding the shift key down, and I'm clicking on the other one. Okay. And let's see what her vest. And let's get her eyes here. And Daisy's eyes are never white. Okay. And after I did that, I see that I need to get in between her eyelashes. So instead of trying to uh, squinch to find it, I'm just going to zoom in and uh, click here, hold the shift key down, and click there. And I'm going to go ahead and click my white because it should be white once I connect this in there. So, zoom back out, take a look and see if there's anything, oh yes, okay, so I, I left off her bracelet, so the only thing left are the areas that I need to fix, and so let me go ahead and get rid of these uh, two pieces. And the way to do that is you have to make sure that the entire uh, outline of Daisy is highlighted. And I have that. And I'm going to hold the shift key down and click in the area that I want to remove. I, I can only do one area at a time. I can't click here and here unless I made both of them half. So with the outer... Um, uh, with the outside of Daisy highlighted in the area that I need to remove, I'll go back to path indifference. I'm going to leave that um, highlighted. I hold the shift key down and I'll click the other area I need to move. Go back to path indifference. So now I just need to get in here and fix it so that her face becomes white. And I've got these two areas. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to uh, worry about you viewing this, but I'm going to zoom in here for two reasons. One, zooming helps me out, and two, it should give you a better uh, view of what I'm doing. So I need to close in this line to separate it because that's the bow, and this is part of her head, and I need to close in here for that same reason. So I'm going to go over here to my Bezier tool. And with my Bezier tool, I'm going to click from this point here to over to this side to connect it. I'll go from here over to this side to uh, connect it. And so let's get started. I'm going to click, draw my line, and double click. I worry really about the thickness of it because when I save it, you'll never know that that's what I did. Click, draw my line over here, and double click. And so now that I've done that, uh, to make sure that I have it right, I need to try to fill it with uh, some color. So I'm going to go to the paint bucket, and I'm going to click on white, and click in here. Oh. Uh, I didn't have white. I thought for sure that I selected white. Okay, let's try white selection. Okay, 
I still have gold. Okay. Well, when I select the paint bucket, what I'd like for you to see is this area right here didn't color all the way up to the line and that is because I need to uh, increase my gross shrink area to tell it to fill it up as close to the line um, by that percentage as possible but if gold is what it wants to do I'm not going to play around with it for the sake of this tutorial now I have this side to see can I get some color and I can so that means that it is now filled in properly so I'll just go back to the select tool now I'll select on um, white and white here and for here I'll use the dropper tool to get that color um, I know that it doesn't really matter well once I use my fill I can't go in and change the color of my uh, little bezier line not that it really matters when I save everything but um, I like uh, coloring it uh, black so I didn't do that step so now my daisy is ready to go so all I have to do well one more thing let me just go up here to click around the outside and just hit the delete to get rid of these little remnants that was there. I don't know if that one was always there or not, but we'll get rid of it. And I'm holding the control key down to uh, reduce it. So now my daisy looks like the original uh, daisy. So all I have to do at this point is to highlight uh, the entire image and go to object um, group or I could have uh, just highlighted all of it and selected uh, up here from the icon group um, or <clears throat> it all depends on what your preference is right click on it and say group at the end of the day Daisy's group now that I'm happy that uh, she looks identical to the uh, original, I can delete the original. Move Daisy back over here. Well, let me go one more step. Now, this step is just an Ann Huffman thing. And that is that um, I like to take my uh, snipping tool and make a copy of it because let's see Daisy Duck I like to uh, always include a, uh, a picture of a file that I'm uploading that's just the Ann Huffman little quirky thing there so let's move Daisy back over here now that I have created a picture and I'm going to save her uh, and I'm going to do file save as and I think I saved the other one over in um, Wow, I'm not sure now where I saved it at. I'll have to find it. <laughs> but I'm going to call her Daisy Duck. She should have been saved where I saved my image file. Daisy Duck. But I'll fix all of that later. And it defaults to Inkscape. I'm going to click this little drop down. Because I need to save it as a plain SVG. Which is like generic SVG. And I'm going to click save. And now Daisy is an SVG file that you can open up. Uh, in your uh, cutters uh, software. So this is how you would uh, trace a color image converted. You lucked out in that I had some hiccups going on in here and so you got a chance to see how to fix it without you know wanting to throw your um, uh, laptop out the window. Um, so this is my Daisy. Isn't she pretty? I love Daisy. Thanks for watching the tutorial.